everybody and welcome to hey man i'm josh uh, i'm jacob hey man hey man what up i mean we're back we're back baby we're back oh, dude this oh, is number oh, two baby. this is number dose 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 go for dose Do dose dose this is two you're back man i'm here we're, we're back in it what do you think about these glasses i stole from your mom can i make the same joke i made last time yeah go ahead no, you know, I'm not going to go Edna Mode. You look more like 1950s nuclear family, but the wife. Do you, <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Is that what I makes feel sense? Like, I feel like these are glasses that Sandra Bullock might wear in a romantic comedy where she's like a novelist. Yeah, I'm going more. I'm, honestly, they look more like Tina Fey, but I, I, get, I get what you mean. Yeah, dude. I, I actually don't hate t being referred to as Tina. Can I tell you something? So embarrassed. I saw Tina Fey backstage at a show, um, one of Chelsea's show when I was touring with Chelsea, and I didn't didn't recognize her. What? How do you not recognize Tina Fey? She even introduced herself as Tina. You're hooked. <laughs> I was like, hey, that's like that's like me walking right by Will Smith, and they left and. And uh, Chelsea even says something like, you kept it pretty cool around Tina Fey. And I was like, was that Tina Fey? <laughs> <laughs> You're dumb. <Yeah. laughs> Dude, listen, can we still tell drug stories? Yeah, why not? Have I ever have I ever told you that story when we tell? Yeah, man, just because I was an addict for a little while doesn't mean we can't still reminisce on what we used to do with drugs. Can I, did I ever tell you the story about, I told you the story when I took ecstasy and saying the, Take me out to the ball game at the Cubs. Oh, with Chelsea? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Oh, I know about that. Yeah. I have that jersey still. Yeah, I, I, uh, that was embarrassing. Um, and if we, if I haven't told that story on the podcast, I will maybe not right now, but have I told that on the podcast, Matt? No. Let me take my Sandra Bullock glasses off. <laughs> are you telling the story? Hey, I mean, some of these emails are kind of heavy. You want me to tell a light story first? Or should I do it in the middle? Maybe in the middle. So at, at any point in time, you just be like, go to that story. Yeah, I'll yeah, go to yeah the I story. got you, I got you. First of all, guys, emails. And just reminding you that if I read your email and you would like two tickets to a show, it is going to be up to you to say, hey, you read my email. Hmm. Can I get a ticket? Um, To any show on the road. And the answer is yes. Okay, everybody. So just so you know that, um, keep sending me at Hey Man with three A's, Hey Man Pod at gmail.com, Hey Man Pod at gmail.com. Any questions you want us to answer? A lot of these aren't questions. These are kind of some heart, incredibly heartfelt, moving emails um, that remind me why we do this. There's also just an email with the heading farts. You know how to get me to click on your email. And yep. farts is right up my alley. No pun intended. Um, so, yeah. We have, uh, I'm going to read over it, but if, but if you also are somebody who's a single parent who cannot afford tickets to a comedy show and need a night out, I would love to provide that night out for you. That is Hey Man Pod, three A's, Hey Man Pod at gmail.com. Tell me what ticket you want to go. Tell me what show you want to go to. And uh, I'm giving away 10 per show. If I don't get back to you, that means I already gave away the tickets. And if I do get back to you, that means you have the tickets. Yeah. How easy is that for you? There you go. Um, all right. But let's get into these emails. Struggled a little bit taking those out of your pocket. Uh, they weren't in my pocket. I, they just got caught on the loop de loop and um, okay. Let's get into my story. I actually don't hate these in a Matthew, Matthew Broderick kind of way. You can make whatever reference you want. There. Do you know who Matthew Broderick is? I know the name. I'll give you three, five guesses. What is the most, the movie that people know Matthew Broderick from the most? You couldn't, I couldn't give you the answer. I'll give you a couple clues. Okay. All right. I've seen this movie. Uh, you know about the movie. I think you've seen it. Oh, that helps. Okay. Ready? All right. 
Uh, if you've seen the movie, you'll know this. He sang Twist and Shout on a float going down a major street oh, in Chicago. Ferris Bueller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You think? Of course, I'm supposed to be Ferris Bueller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. Matthew Broderick. Ah, got it. Got it. Yeah, dude. Ma- the, obviously. Yeah. One of my favorites of all time. Yeah, for sure. Okay. I think it's Iman's favorite 80s movie. Um, What's a good choice? It's a great. It's great. But that's Matthew Broderick. So oh. this is, feels very Matthew Broderick. You know, he's married to um, Sex and the City, Jessica, Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, huh. very nice. Yeah. Is her name still Sarah Jessica Parker, though? You don't take his last name? She's never been Sarah Jessica Broderick. Oh, have they been married for a long time? Yeah, I think so. Oh. All right, then. Yeah, I think so. All, all right, then. By the way, I, wa- I, dude, I watched Forrest Gump again. And I just want to say to you revisionist history people who now are coming out against Forrest Gump, you fucking better watch your tongue around me. What a great movie. <laughs> it's a great movie. Yo, and it's revisionist history. We were watching, like, wait, is he really in the White House? Like, we'd never seen any technology like that before. Yeah. Who's, are the people trying to pick it apart right now? Yo, dude. Oh, Jesus. I, I don't disagree with that. Uh, I don't disagree with that. I don't extremely love my generation. You, but your generation watches movies in pieces on TikTok and decides if they're good or not. True. <laughs> True that. <laughs> that is, I do that. That is in the words. But of, I only ever watch, I only ever watch movies on TikTok that I've already seen. This is just supposed to be the best part. In though, the like, words of my people, that's retarded. Retarded. All right. Let's get into this, everybody. Emails from you. Uh, let's start. Guys, I'm telling you, these are so heartfelt. Heavy. Heavy, but they mean so much for so many reasons. Please don't read this on the pod. Let's say, okay. Did he really say, please don't read this on the pod? So let's start over. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Let's start that over. That is pretty funny. Okay. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you read the whole message first. So long. Just just go down to the bottom because they'll either say at the top or the bottom, (laughs) please don't read this on the podcast. Okay, guys. So just so you know. That is so (laughs) ridiculous. (laughs) We just read. This incredibly heartfelt <laughs> email from this guy, just, just really, just as honest and raw yep. as it co- possibly could be. And then the last line was, "Please, Please don't, don't read this, this on the pod." <laughs> so we're gonna start over. <laughs> uh. Wow, dude, that was like heavy too, yeah, man. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. I was going to say how fucking brave of this dude to just come out and say this, but that clearly explains. Maybe I should read the whole email before I. Yep. Okay. Let's try this one. You want to try it again there, Tina Fey? Yeah. Okay. This is from Matt. My name is Matt. I'm 30. I just want to say say thank you. My dad passed seven years ago. Maybe I should jump to the bottom. Yeah, I just said, remember I said read it all the way to the bottom? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. My dad passed seven years ago, and I took it pretty hard. He was my number one supporter in everything I did. I've been listening to the podcast from the start, and just listening to you and Jacob brings me a lot of comfort. And I honestly take a lot of advice from you. As a father myself, listening to you and Jacob, I get both sides of things. My kids are both under five, so I'm still a young single father and still learning. I just wanted to say thank you for all the advice you give and the advice I've taken from you and the comfort I get from something as simple as your podcast. Thank you so much, Josh and Jacob. So a couple things, dude. First of all, Matt, thank you so much for sending that in. Um, And must have been hard as a young man at 23 to lose your dad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Difficult at any age, obviously, to lose a parent. 
Um, and, um, man, I, I, as a single dad, man, I, I understand there are so many, uh, you know, a single dad or a single parent, single dad, I would just say is different. There's different pressures, single dad, single mom, excuse me, single dad. People just assume you don't know what you're doing. Hmm. I would have people come up to me at the park and be like, you know, your kids need water. And I'd be like, oh, is that right? <laughs> so they need to drink water. That's so good to know. I've just been feeding them food, no liquids. <laughs> so I appreciate the water tip. But there's also a lot more leniency as a single dad. Yeah. Dude, if you see a picture of a dude holding a kid's hand in a Facebook post, you're like, that's a good dad. You don't even know if that's his kid. <laughs> But you're like, look at that good dad. Whenever you see a kid running around crazy at a ball, at a mall or a park, sometimes you go where there, where's that kid's parents? But a lot of times you're like, where's his mom? There's a lot of different pressures depending on single mom or dad. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, my my mind always goes to where are this kid's parents? Like I never. Knew. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, but but like, there is a lot more expectations on the mom. Yeah, I would say I agree for with sure. That. But Matt. At 30, um, to be taking this on and to have lost your dad. Um, and so I'm sure you understand the importance of a lot of things that a lot of young parents did not and do not. And so I'm humbled that you are um, getting advice and ideas from this podcast and from how Jacob and I interact with each other. Um, and you know, I, for just to have young kids, I would just, just remember just to keep it as fun as you can, dude. Not, not just for them, but for you too. Mm. You know, there's a way to tell people to clean up a living room that can be fun Mm. and not intimidating or not make it sound like a chore. There's a way that ba- you can get in the bath or time for bed. It Keep it fun, man. Yeah. I've just never felt like fear was a great part of parenting. But um, humbled and honored to um, hear that you get comfort and joy out of this podcast and from the relationship that Jacob and I have. So thank you so much for sending that email. Yeah. Jacob, Absolutely. do you have anything? No, nah, man. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't. It's only ima- two years, three years older than you, dude. That's what I'm saying. I couldn't imagine like you losing my dad at 23. Like, I mean, to think about that, we wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be here, obviously, right now, speaking to you about about that. Also, like on a complete emotional level, 23. I just turned 23 during COVID. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. So you know, I, we appreciate the love and. And and I'm you know obviously sorry for what you've been through and thank you for for finding some solace and and you know us talking about dicks all the time. By the way, Matt, make it known that I did not bring up dicks. That was Jacob Wolf. No, There's been a lot of hula, hoopla. Thank you, hoopla say, who, online, say, hula, hula hoop? about me talking about dicks. And I just wanted to be clear that Matt usually sets up the dick talk. But I was, I steered clear, dicks. You jumped on it. I just want to also point out, Matt, that I said dicks once and he said dicks eight times in the last 10 seconds. So. I was just, uh, got him. This is from Nate. Hey, I'm Nate. Just wanted to offer a few words. Of, that's how Nate says it. I know. I know. It just made me laugh. He's like, this is from Nate. Hey, I'm Nate. Yeah, <laughs> man. I was giving Nate a little energy. Hey, I'm Nate. I'll Sorry, give, go ahead. No, want go me ahead. to give Nate an accent? No, 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 it's not. Hello, I'm Nate. Who are you, Sean Connery now? Yeah, I just wanted to offer a few words of support. I don't like this. If it all needed along the recovery process of recovering from addiction because it's a long, hard process and community is a huge part of that. To Jacob, I don't know you personally, but you look like you smell. No, he didn't put that. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, Nate. <laughs> I want you to get tickets to whatever show you want. We're going to throw hands. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know you. I don't know you personally, but you definitely have brightened up my life quite a lot. 
tragedy that you're having to go through this experience. I've been through the ringer due to my former addiction. Just make sure to take it one day at a time and make room for processing forgiveness for yourself along the way. Mm. That's great advice. That's great advice. You're incredibly talented and a one of a kind person. And I look forward to seeing you come out. Oh, oh of this stronger than you knew you could be. I thought maybe it would stop it to come out, but mm. that nobody laughed at that one. So. No, no. Cause we all knew you were setting it up. So. Okay. All right. Just looking at seeing you to come out of this stronger than you knew you could be. Me too. That's yeah, one of the also me. Yeah, I'm excited to see who the like the real me is. Yeah, dude, I I um thank you, Nate, by the way. I appreciate it. I think we talked about it when you were going in that I think I told you you're stronger than you think you are. Yeah, you did. Mm-hmm. Um to Josh. You're the most handsome man. Stop it. Will you just okay. read the email? How did you know that wasn't true? Because I knew it wasn't true. You went one for two. On- I, well, I'll do it in Nate's voice to Josh. You're the most handsome man. You know what? It's not Sean Connery anymore. It's Jim Carrey and the Grinch. I don't mind that. It's not a bad one. You're providing such great support for Jacob along the way, and I'm so glad to see it. Me and my dad are also and have most always been very close, and you remind me a lot of how he helped me to, helped to support me through the time. So, like, seriously, you're commendable. Do know that while he feels far at the moment, it's hard to watch him go through the mental hurdles of this process that it does as all things pass. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much, Nate. I appreciate that, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was addicted to a host of things and wound up paralyzing myself during an overdose about four years wow. ago. Three days after I woke up in the hospital, I ended up just refusing all narcotics and it was still something I struggled with for a few years. Due to all that, I've got pretty good experience with recovering if I can offer any help, I'd love to. I look forward to continuing to watch your content and seeing Jacob come back to where he wants to be. Nate. Wow. What? Whoa. Cur- I mean, I guess I'm curious. He says he became paralyzed. Is he still paralyzed? No, I don't think. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that, Nate, what? I don't know. I'm going to email you back, dog. I would like to know. Like, I, I just, like, I guess a curiosity, qu- curiosity question and how. Yeah. Like, like how, well, I would, yeah. Was it like a physical injury or like when you, like in the, like within the, the, no, it feels like the overdose attacked his nerves. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's what I'm I'm curious about. Like that is definitely something I have never heard of. Like maybe he OD'd and fell and something happened or like, but like also I've never heard of ODing and then the drugs attacking your nervous system. Yeah. That's, but either way, wild. Uh, honestly, dude, Nate, and to a lot of you, th- this this type of email and, and like the one we just read, the connection is what makes this podcast so special. Yeah, hearing about your relationships with your parents, your dads, with your moms, with your kids, is really what makes this podcast so meaningful to me. Not just being able to spend time with you, dude. But hearing about other people's relationships with their parents or their kids and how this, they can relate to it through uh, our relationship has really been very meaningful in, in it for me. And I, and I could not be more humbled by it. So, Nate, thank you so much for the advice and the well wishes. And we really appreciate you. We hope to see you at a show soon, Nate. Yeah, dude. Um, this is from Jerry in the title of this email is single quadriplegic okay i'm in yeah you hooked me yeah you definitely got me at the at the at the title i'm I'm in let's go okay this feels like what was that thing on did you read the whole thing i think so (laughs) what was that thing matt on um on uh craigslist misconnections this sounds like a misconnection okay this is from Jerry, single What's quadruple connection. It's like I people would be like, I saw you at the Starbucks. We caught, caught eyes, but we never, I was too chicken to walk over. You were wearing a Snoopy crew neck and I was wearing a cardigan. Copy. Right. Okay. This is from Jerry, single quadruple Jerry. This kind of makes me nervous, but I would love to reconnect with my ex. Her name is, ooh, I don't want to give her name without consent. Her, just make up a name. Nah, I'll say her name is Rachel. Because Rachel, if you, there probably aren't that many Rachels that 
dated a qu- single quadriplegic. Well, he wasn't single when they dated, so just, right. just dated a quadriplegic. Her na- ex-name, her, her name is Rachel. I've known she's been the one for me since before I was in my accident, which left me a quadriplegic in wheelchair, which has been like 15 plus years. We tried having a relationship before, but there were too many variables that were against it. But I feel she's the only one I want to be with, and I've had multiple chances to have sex with other women, but it just did not feel right. So I can't go through with it. I know strange because I'm a guy, right? But I know what I want. You know what you want. I'm 35 and live in North Dakota. Is there a question at the end of that or is that just it? No, it feels like he's trying to... Is he asking for advice? No, maybe just hoping that Rachel listens. Um, I am going to give his last name. Whoa, for the sake of maybe Rachel. Well, if Rachel did Rachel know this guy? So it sounds like they were in a relationship pre-accident. Correct. So does she know he was in the accident? Correct. And, but also like, I got to assume, like, I mean, I guess I can't assume. Cause By the way, it was over 15 years ago. Right, right. So you guys are completely different people though now. 15 years later. Yeah, let's try it. And you know what? At my my brain, let's keep all the completely different people jokes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I mean... I'll uh, say them off air because yeah, that'll yeah. be... But also, like... I'll just write them down right now like, so look, don't forget them. Obviously, man, like, quadriplegic or not, accident or not, you still deserve love and finding a person that you want to be with for the rest of your life. Yes. However, also at the same time, my instinct would be I, going back to somebody is probably not the way to find the person moving forward well, in your life. Right. Because also, like, you don't know how she's going to react or react that to now that you're in a chair. And also, I, like, I'm trying to figure out how to say this and not, of, uh, like, make it sound like not rude way. I think you I, should say it. And if we need to cut it, we will. Asking someone... Like, I mean, obviously getting to know somebody and then eventually getting in a relationship and being like, are you okay with being with a person forever who's in a chair? I feel like also like, like you know, for the other person, it is sometimes a big ask. I, I would also, and like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know about this, but there's dating sites for. Yeah. It just, for, it sounds like he's really stuck on her though. Yeah. And so well, like, I am, I can only imagine that you, that you have a lot of feelings in time to think and like yeah, Jesus but I, I I would think that a dating site like for there's got to be a dating site for quadriplegics yeah I'm trying to don't you think yeah I'm trying to think of a real name but also at the same time yeah I've been I've been <laughs> holding the jokes off yeah because there's a lot of <laughs> quadriplegic dating site names that I am that are jokes that I'm trying not to say wheel harmony wheel harmony <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Wheel Harmony's awesome. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, man. I just, there was one. I had to get one out. I yeah. Just, right, as you, right as I said it, I was like, ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> Wheel Harmony's funny yeah, and nice. It's lighthearted. It's so much nicer yeah. than what I was going to say. Yeah, I know it was. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I just got one out there. So it leveled the playing field. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was not going to make a hockey puck reference. I promise. Yeah, man, look, to end on, to end on that, <laughs> all I'm going to say is, like, uh, I like, can't believe I didn't even get a smile at either one of you. Nah, I look, man, what was our boy's name again? I'm sorry, I got, huh? What was our boy's name again? Jerry. Jerry. Jerry, what I would say is, man, like, I don't know. I don't know if you're looking for advice or asking for advice. I'm going to give you unsolicited advice. I don't know what dating is like in a chair. I can only imagine it's not the easiest thing of all time. That's why I think a dating site would be perfect. Right. But look, if you're stuck on this one girl, I would say revisit it. I would say talk to her. Tell her how you feel. Because look, it goes one of two ways. It goes, actually, it probably goes a couple ways. But my two ways are you try it, or three ways. You try it, it works out, y'all end up together. Great. You try it, it doesn't work out, and then, you know, I, she breaks your heart, but at least you know that you're not staying, I think you're not staying stuck. He's having a, a hard time finding her. Oh. He wants to reconnect. Or maybe he knows where she, if you know where she is, Jerry, I would reach out. Uh, look, you got to go for it. Like this, whether you're like, this goes for anybody, whatever position you're in, it, you never know until you try. If you go and she feels the same way, hooray, you guys live a happy life. 
But if she doesn't feel the same way, then you know. And then when you know, you can move on and yeah, stop being stuck. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, that's where I would be with that. I would try to learn some wheelchair tricks before you go. Like, but pop, they can all do wheelies. Pop a wheelie? I can pop a wheelie in a wheelchair. Yeah, but you're using your hands. Is he a paraplegic or quadriplegic? Quadriplegic. Oh, so that's neck down. I think so, yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Take back what I said. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, look, honestly, Jerry, it goes back to something I said at the beginning of our last podcast. Wake up. One life. That was the end. It was the beginning. It was the end. But wake up. <laughs> one life. And you've already spent however many years thinking about her. There's only one way to figure out if she's been thinking about you. And that's to, to talk to her. Because again, like eventually. Like, that is to dial that phone number with your nose and get on a call with her. <laughs> I got to make jokes, guys. Yeah, no, you had to get one out there. I, <laughs> yeah. I could see you bubbling up over Beep. There. Boop. Beep. All right. Yeah, man. Look, you got to try. Because like if you find out she doesn't feel the same way, then. If you're stuck on her for the rest of time, that's, you know, whatever. But it gives you the opportunity for closure and to move on. Yeah. So Speaking of which, we're going to the next one. Jerry! Yep. I hope he works out for you, brother. Me too, man. Very much. So. Uh, okay. Oh, this is okay. All right. Next one. This is a lot of okays and all rights. From, <laughs> this is, was a silent fan for six years until now. This is from Shandy. Are you allowed to read this? We're going to find out. We're going to read the whole one. You should read it at the bottom first. Just see if it says don't read on the pod. My favorite name so far, Shandy Janko. That's not a real name. Shandy Janko? Why are you saying a last name? Why isn't it a real name? Oh, I thought maybe it was a screen name, but if you're saying their actual name, maybe yeah, you no, should no. I, I think it's a real name. Okay, well, just, just first name. Okay, Shandy. There you go. Last name. Hey, man. First, I would like to start off by saying that I wish you and your family all the best health and strength. Thank you very much. Cheers. Six and ish years ago, my family was struggling hard with addiction. My oldest son, Damien, showed me one of your clips on YouTube. I became a huge fan. Your stories about your relationship with Jacob really hit home for us. Thank you. He keeps saying sorry for my ADHD rambling. Dude, if you've listened to the podcast, don't You're apologize. in the perfect place. But this podcast, still the only one I'm subscribed to. Let's go! Got him! Watching you with Jacob helped me soundboard. so many so many ways. Let's number one that. being my kids are number one first and always. I finally found someone who's a good father figure and stories of Beth helped me. How Beth have helped me. Hmm. I'm just filling in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my family is all super ADHD, love weird shit, and find dicks and farts poop hilarious. Are you sure, Jacob, you didn't write this? <laughs> Um, so as much as you show us, we live every day also. I've heard you and preach it myself that your kids will never tell you everything. True. So seeing this makes my heart hurt, but happy is getting the help he needs. I hope he knows how, how much he, both of you are loved and have truly helped keep my views of life and people's sobriety and mental health up. Thank you so much. Oh yeah. Please let Nick, Jacob know that I'm sending as much good energy as I can to help me. Hey, Jacob. I appreciate you, Shandy. Shandy wants you to know that he's sending as much good energy and help. Health. Damn it. Great job. Ready, take two. And action. Just, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Long shot. I know that this would be a holiday miracle, but here it is. My family wish. My boys, Damien. I'm not going to read your kid's name. You just did. No, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's cross that out. My boys, 20 and 16, and I have always wanted to see you live. Fuck yeah. Love it. We've shared these videos with their mom I'm assuming that's grandma, Auntie Nin, and cousin JJ. And it has helped keep a bond with them. The bio father overdosed one year ago and is found alone dead in a tent in a homeless camp. Ugh. I have struggled with my personal addiction problems and abusive exes. With this month marking one year since passing, we were wondering if you could bring us together for a two year fuck yeah over to reality. I saw you have a few shows coming up in Texas. And I was wondering if you could somehow get us in those shows. Yes. Houston, baby. You want to come to the Houston show, dude? You have got it for you, your boys, 
Well, I'm not sure if the 16-year-old can get in. I'll try to make that happen. For sure, my mom, Auntie Nin, Cousin JJ. That's six? Yeah. Five for sure. We're going to work on six. Listen to me. Shandy. Fuck yeah. Yeah, fucking right. Yeah, dude, I would love to bring... I want to meet Auntie Nin and my mom. 100%. Do you think maybe he just put too many and it's just supposed to be mom? No. It feels like a grandma name. Spell it. M-O-M-O-M. Mom, mom. Okay, sure. That does feel like a grandma name. Don't, don't you know. think? Yeah, sure. So, oh, yeah. Sure, she's going to show up and it's going to be just the mom. So, yes, dude. Yes, yes, yes. A thousand percent. Yes, yes. Houston, baby. H-Town, baby. We'll also be in Fort Worth somewhere in the next, in the new year. I don't know when. Yeah, but that's, yeah. But yes, a hundred percent. Yes. I'm going to type that back to you. Yes. All right. Well, I'll talk while he clicks. Um, but yeah, man, that sounds dope. I'm really sorry to hear about the biological father. Um, that is, you know, I, I, it is so fucking awful. Like, obviously this is a disease, but you know, for me, like I see this more as like a demon. I see addiction more as just like this demonic presence that it does not discriminate. It takes who it wants and gives no, it gives nothing back unless, you know, you want to fight through it. Um, I see that for me. I see that for my buddy Jack who passed away. And, you know, I'm sorry you're struggling with your own personal addictions, but I'm happy to hear that you're working through it. But fucking bring my mom. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Jacob. Ah, so what? I am going to, I'm, well, let's move on to Urban Dictionary terms. There's not another one you want to read? No. Oh, okay. Thanks for the emails, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, Send some more. More. These are Urban Dictionary terms that people sent in for email. Now, while you're looking through them, do you want me to tell the Chelsea Cubs story? That's up to you. I mean, like, you might as well. So, I was on tour with Chelsea Handler. And, um, and by the way, guys, I'll say this. I've said this a million times. Love Chelsea. Have zero negative things to say about her and my experience on the show. I wish everybody gets to have experience like that in their career at some time. What a, just a fucking phenomenal five, six years that was. Okay. We got to do such cool things. One of them was we were at the Cubs game. Those of you who don't know, I'm a huge baseball fan. I'd never been to Wrigley. So not only did we get our own jerseys, but we were going to throw out the first pitch and we were singing, take me out to the ball game. Now, Take Me Out to the Ball Game in Chicago is an iconic thing to be able to do. If you Google it, and by the way, I don't, well, I'll, I'll get to that later. They're just iconic people. And so many people want to sing the seventh. It's, it, it comes in the seventh inning. Take Me Out to the Ball Game. You do it in the broadcast booth. It's amazing. So Chelsea's going to throw out the first pitch. And then in the seventh inning, we're going to do Take me out of the ballgame. We get to the ballpark. We're in the box. And it looks like it's just dumping and it's not going to get any better. And they're going to cancel the game. So they tell us, yeah, we're going to, it looks like the game's going to be canceled. So she says, do you want to do some drugs? And I was like, yeah. So we each take a pill, an ecstasy pill. And as soon as we swallow it, the clouds part. The sun comes out and the guy pops his head in and goes, looks like we're getting the game in. And we were like, oh, fucking no. So, but they just, it just started to hit as we're walking onto the field for her to throw out the first pitch. And she turns and looks at me with this fucking smile that was so amazing. And indicative of who, I don't know. I can't speak for who she is. I don't, because I don't, she, and I don't, this isn't in a negative way. Not like we said, fuck you to each other. But you know, sometimes lives grow apart and you're just not in each other's lives anymore. But so indicative of who I knew her to be. It's that smile of, holy shit. I have no idea how this is going to go, but I fucking love it. She's not an athlete, although she would tell you she could beat me in ping pong, probably. Disagree. 
She could have ping pong. She, th- I think the last time we hung out, we played ping pong at her house. She might have beat me. I forget. But were you guys on drugs? Yes. That doesn't count. So, um, she goes out in, in outside of maybe 50 Cent and Carl Lewis throws the worst fi- first pitch of all time. We're laughing. About the fourth inning comes around and we're still high, but we're like, listen, we're going to have to do this. Take me out of the ball game. We should probably be higher. So we take another hit of ecstasy. And we are just like, we're going over the words. Because I'm like, I don't want to fuck up the words to this. People who suck at this get eviscerated. Yeah. They get booed. They get fucking drug forever. Not drugs, but drug in the mud, right? Dragged? Dragged? Drugged? Dragged, dragged. Yep. I wish it, you'd get drugged forever. <laughs> no, we don't. I don't. We're sober, actually. Yeah, what are we doing here? By the way, this sober stuff is so boring. No, no. shit. <laughs> no, trust me, man. Like, like yo, Woo! I've met so many, like, so many people are like, being sober is cool. Like, I'm so happy. And I'm like, when the fuck does that kick in, yeah, dog? Dude. Like, like people, this people is were, the most boring moment of my entire life is listening to you say how happy so how happy you are that you've been sober pe- for 40 years. It's like people oh, keep th- asking me, so Jacob's sober. I'm like, yep. Yeah. And they're like, you're sober with him. I'm like, I am. And they're like, what do you think? I'm like, I think it sucks. I know why people go back to drugs. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm waiting for the moment where I'm like, you know what? This sober thing's kind I of fun. Not, yeah, I'm waiting for that moment. I'm waiting for, for that moment because it has not showed up. But that's what people say. They're like, the first year is the hardest. You're like, you can't tell me I got to wait a year until this shit actually starts sounding fun. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's dumb. But I, I went, yeah, that's, I, I went and saw a movie sober. I was like, this is what this is about? It's terrible. Holy shit. You'll never find me in a movie theater ever. <laughs> God, I was like, I'm not coming back here. I'm, oh, doing, I'm watching them all from the house. Yeah, why well, pay all that money when you just sit on your couch? Uh, yeah, fuck you. Anyways, <laughs> so we, um, we, Matt's on drugs. We, <laughs> Now, funny. whenever I see anyone below the nose, I'm like, that guy's on drugs. Um, so <laughs> we're going over the words. Take me out to, to the ball. Do you know them all? Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jacks. I don't care if I ever get back when it's root. Root, root for the red. So I, I'm saying yeah. that's awesome. If they don't win, it's a shame. Let's go. Or it's one, uh, two, uh, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. Perfect. Of course I know that. Why would you not know that? Even on drugs, I would know that. Okay. So we just want to make sure we know it. We get up to the booth. Now, I can only imagine that we looked like raccoons. I remember the video. Our eyes. Have you seen the video? There's not online. No, no, but you had the video. I had it, yeah. We got to find that video. Jeff Wills sent it to me. Yo, you got to text Jeff. To Dude, get, you got to find that. Our out. eyeballs, we must have looked like raccoons. You like, looked like you had a pool ball, like eight pool balls Dude. in your eyes. And we get out there, we're up there. Chelsea's charming the shit out of him in the in the booth. And we're having a good time. And she's like, you, you, really, you ready? And we start. You know, like, you know, you know, like when you're at a birthday party and they start singing happy birthday. But whoever starts it starts way too low. Yeah. So then everybody's stuck. Yeah. Take. Everyone's take. stuck down there. Whoever started it started way too low. And it just was, we couldn't, it was like too low for me to get to. Couldn't find the pitch. She's a terrible singer. Yep. And it was just muffled and mumbled and low. And she was so mad. Well, not mad. We were laughing. But she was like, I took you up there because you can actually sing. I go, yeah, but somebody started too low. She was like, what the fuck does that mean? But it was. You would know if you, 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 would, you would know if you could sing. I was so happy that this was pre everyone having a phone. It would be uh, humiliating. It was so bad, dude. So bad. But no booze. But like a, a strong D minus. Yeah. And the only reason it wasn't an F is because I think we remembered all the words. And you didn't get booed. It, but we were, what well, also made it okay was that we were so high. It didn't matter. Nah. Yeah. Not even one bit. Yeah. Good one. That's a good time. All right. What do you got for me? I have 
this one is a little tamer than the other two that okay. I have pulled up. So why not give me the non-tamer one? I'll give you the tame one first, and then we will escalate as it gets higher. We're doing more than one. We'll do two. So pick your two. Hmm. Okay, I want to save that one for the finale. And we'll just do this one. Because this other one's a little... There's a lot of directions in this other one. It's also called Gamora. So I'm going to stay away from that. Okay, why? I don't know. This just like... Can I just read it to you? And then like, this is not the one I'm going to do. I'm going to do the other two. Sure. So Gamora is an extremely filthy version of sex. It starts when person A begins to have a bowel movement. Just as the shit is about to exit, person B inserts their penis. Then person B removes their penis and proceeds to shit into the other person's mouth. It's There's more. Nah, let's move past. You want to hear the last part of it? Nah. Yeah, come on. Nah, do they kiss? No, it's just it's just a lot of mixing of fecal nah, matter. Nah, pass. These other two, this, this next one's got some fecal matter also. Okay. It's called the Tennessee Log Jamma. Okay, so I, get, I knew that was going to have some poop in it. I just said it did. Yeah. But yeah. okay, so that's going to count as one of my guesses because I would have guessed. Okay, so what is it? It's five guesses. Well, it's five questions, one guess. Yeah. Okay, I got you on the count. So, so it has to do with poop. Correct. Does it have to do with a penis going into a butthole? No. Oh, wow. So, Tennessee log jammer. Jammer. Jam. Jammer. I said jamma. Okay, so it's a log jammer. Is there something going into a butthole? No. I was I was I was confused too. I'm reading it right now. Does like, it make sense the name and the the title and the action? Yes. Technically. Okay. It's not what I would have thought, for sure. Is there is it specific to Tennessee? Is Tennessee important? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So all I know is it's got to do with poop. No butthole. Nothing going in a butthole. Correct. Okay. So my last question is. Oh, you got two more. Okay. Is the poop going into a different orifice? No. Is it more than one person's poop? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I like how that's where that question led you. Okay, so it's multiple people's poop. Tennessee log jammer. 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 Okay. But it's not going into buttholes or any other orifice. So why are they jamming a log of poop? Okay. So I think it's dudes having putting the poop over their penises and using it as like a, a penis log of poop your brain is fascinating well it's not correct okay but your, bra <laughs> but your brain is fascinating i thought i nailed that no 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 no, no. um okay a tennessee log jammer is when two to three men stand on a ladder with a male or female participant laying at the bottom the first man shits, then the second man shits, and so on until all the logs, poop, have been dropped on the participant at the bottom. Sometimes the logs will collide, causing a jam. So it's pretty much just three people taking a shit on somebody in consecutive order. That was an neat. By the way, guys, these are not ones that Jacob... Uh, these are sent to our email. Yeah. A complicated sexual maneuver requiring three men and one woman with That's a... Right. That, you don't have to... Sure. I think I get it. Do you want me to just go in for no, the No, I got it. I got sure. it. Sure. Does, now the person who sent it, do they want? Do they have like a? Do they want their name read? I'm not gonna lie. After I got rid of the first, I accidentally closed your email. I have these other two pulled up for, like the the Urban Dictionary. But okay, I closed your email. So. Okay. All right. So if you did want that and you sent it in, Mister Log, Mister or Mrs. Logjamma, let me know. You get two free tickets to a show for us reading your email. This is. One of the best Urban Dictionary terms I've ever heard in my entire life. By the way, this next one. I do need to know qualification because the other one didn't seem sexual. So if they're not sexual, I need to know that going in. 
just I standing on a be, why standing on a ladder because it's it, it it it's like symbolizes like a log jammer like them putting log I don't know like we don't we don't chop wood yeah so but like, how does they when they hit each other how it how does it get jammed I don't know logs collide yeah said. yeah okay yeah I don't know that's what I'm saying it was a little confusing yeah and by the way I feel like if you have something to do with poop it's all kind of sexual is it. Yeah, it's got to be a kink of some sort, right? Like the, the woman who's getting shit on has to be aroused by something. Does she? Yes. Has to be. Okay, but but is it like a Cleveland steamer is sexual? Is it? I guess. It is. Uh, some people have poop kinks, which I don't understand. Um, some people have pee kinks, which I also don't understand. You know, some it's just it's dude, some people's somebody things. pooped on me, we would be fighting. Yeah, no shit. To the death. Yeah. 100%. To the fucking death. Yeah, 100%. So, I think it, I think all of these are somewhat sexual. I was on, I went on vacation with somebody. I won't say his name. I went on vacation with somebody, and we were staying in the same room, and um, he picked up a girl. I did not. And in the morning, she woke up to go to the bathroom, mm -hmm. and um, I hear him go, hey. And I go, yeah. And I, I, I straight up passed out. Mm. So drugged out, drunk that I, it, whatever was happening in the next bed, I have no idea. I know. Or I was, any I was out. Yeah, I was out. And he goes, hey. And I go, yeah. And he goes, I think I went to bed. And I go, what? And he goes, I'm pretty sure I peed all over her last night. And I go, you think? You did? What do you mean you think? And he goes, well, it's like a hundred percent suspicious. <laughs> I go, he go, I go, what do you, he goes, my boxers are all wet. And if it's wet, like going the direction of the kitchen, you probably peed on it. And I go, did you? And from the bathroom, I hear, I know. <laughs> he definitely peed on me. <laughs> Don't pretend you're asleep either. And I was like, yeah. And she came out of the bathroom and she was like, the least you can do is buy me breakfast for peeing all over me. He was like, deal. Deal. <laughs> it's a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. And his name was, no, I'm just kidding. Do I know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> is it an uncle? I can't, I, I can't get too that's into a, specifics that's a yes. on a yes or a no. That's a yes. Because if I do, then it, people will start narrowing down. That means it's an uncle. It's not an uncle. It's not an uncle. Okay. Is it a cousin? It's not an uncle or a cousin. No, no. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. I feel like you told me that story before. I have. Yeah, damn it. I want to know who it is after. I'll tell you after. I'll tell you. Okay. This Urban Dictionary term is definitely sexual. Okay. There, it is a very long definition. Give me the name. Canada's history. What's the first word? Canada. Like Canada. Like oh, Canada's Canada. history. Okay. Canada's history. Okay. Is there, you want to read this? Is there maple syrup involved? <laughs> yes. Okay. Actually, there is. Uh, is anyone dressed like a Mountie? What's a Mountie? That's a no, then. No. <laughs> yeah, okay. No. Um, is there... Okay. Is it man and a woman? Yes, but you're also missing... A, and a moose. Yeah. How yeah. did you know that? I, I, I was assuming the moose was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did yeah. you really think? Yes. You yeah, didn't yeah. read this before? No, I was going to surprise you with a moose. Okay. Moose is correct. Yeah. yeah we well, are talking woman, about Canada's history. I'm thinking... Man, woman, and moose is yeah, correct. Yeah, I'm thinking moose and maple syrup. That is correct. Okay. Is there snow your brain, involved? Your brain is fascinating. Snow. No. Snow. There is no snow. Last question. Is there any hockey paraphernalia in there? <laughs> no. Okay. It's a okay. good guess. <laughs> Okay. Good guess. okay, okay. So, can I add something into this real quick? Yeah. It's performed by members of Canada's high society. I just wanted to put that in there. I don't know if that changes your thoughts or not. No, because I don't have any idea what that means, high society. I know. I just thought I'd put it in there for you. Like, just for the that's what out. it says. Performed by members of Canada's high society. It's literally the first sentence before it even tells you what it is. Matt, will you Google what Canada's high society is? Oh, it's GS. She, okay. Um, okay. So here's what I'm saying it is. 
It is. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, but no hockey paraphernalia. No. No hockey paraphernalia. I wish I knew more about the history of Canada. But here's what I'm going to say. Wait, wait, no, wait. Yes, there is. I mean, it's not It's not hockey paraphernalia. It's something to do with hockey, but it's not like... Uh, okay. Look, I don't think you're ever going to guess this. Can I tell you what the hockey thing is? Yes. The Stanley Cup. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I just remembered. I just read it again, and okay. I was like, wait, there is something. That's hockey paraphernalia. Is it paraphernalia, though? Yeah, that's got to do with hockey. But is it paraphernalia? It's a paraphernalia. I, it's going to fit under that title for me. Okay, sure. Then yes. Okay. You, it, you, two people ride into the, their bedroom on a moose. They pour maple syrup over themselves that was in the Stanley Cup. And they have sex while they sing Oh Canada. I mean, look, I would rather yours be the answer, but okay. it's not. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. I'm going to read this word for word right now. Okay. Canada's history is a sex act performed by the members of high of Canada's high society in which maple syrup is poured generously onto the crotch of the willing female. Okay. Who then mounts the face of the moose by holding its antlers. Love this start. The moose is encouraged by the presence of the sweet syrup to perform... Kind of like this. Yeah, that was the exact word. Yeah. Okay. On the woman, while the Stanley Cup is positioned below to collect the dripping. This is great. <laughs> Once a sufficient volume... By the way, the drippings sounds like they're at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Once a sufficient volume is collected, the willing male participant dips his erect phallus into the cup prior to insertion into the moose's anus. Yeah, dude, first of all, Prefer a dick covered in maple syrup is not going to go in and out of anything easily. No, nope, preferably before the moose has slurped up all the syrup, is what it says in parentheses. Depending upon the size of the phallus inserted into the moose, one of two results will occur. Death of the human. Yes. Okay, here you go. Number one, the moose will become agitated to some degree of insanity and attempt to... To some degree? <laughs> and attempt to buck off both the man and woman at this point. Have you ever uh, seen an angry moose? It'll yeah, kill that motherfucker. You know they run forty five miles an hour through snow. You know what doesn't that dude? Yeah, with di with maple syrup at, on his at dick. At this point, if the couple lasts at least eight seconds and both of, both of That's them a rodeo ride, would you let me finish? Sorry, <laughs> and both reach the point of orgasm, they win the Stanley Cup. This is referred to as two Canucks one cup rodeo. Pretty good. I like that. Or number two, the moose will become aroused and will proceed to insert itself into the female. If the female is unwilling, a suitable midget replacement will suffice. Well, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the part that sounds ridiculous? Really? <laughs> Nothing else? None of the other things that I said? Well, the first part, the guy fucking the moose. Listen. Two, by the way, two Canucks, one cup rodeo is hilarious. Super funny. I love that. The guy fucking the moose is never going to happen. The moose is going to kill you. Murder you. First of all, you got to get on a stool. He's going to buck his legs. He's going to kick his hoof. Through your chest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, I also am assuming that the moose might be a bit toothy. So maybe yeah, she better be clean shaven because if not, he's going to be trying. Whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Yeah. He's, he's like, if she's not clean shaven, he's going to like, you know, eat it like it's grass and just like pull it out. No, no, dude. Yes. No, the maple syrup is on the vagina, not on the mound. There's, there's that word again. There's probably a bunch of it all over. It says it says generously onto the crotch. The mound is the crotch area, okay. crotchal area. Okay. Cro what do you want to call it? The mound is there. So I mean, like, you know, crotchal. I don't know. I just made up a word. Big whoop. Want to fight about it? Big whoop. <laughs> what? Big whoop. Want to fight about it? Yeah. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Um, so yeah, those are our two um, Urban Dictionary terms. Big that. whoop one of is like straight back to sixth grade, Gaylord. <laughs> That's what we used to call each other all I the know. time. I know. You really like to reminisce about that. No, I don't. <laughs> it's not the first time you brought it up. Well, dude, that was what a great way to end the show. Canada's history. Crazy. Oh snap. This use it in a sentence. Oh, snap. Did you see Stephen Colbert and Sarah Palin do Canada's history 
to Bullwinkle while Rocky watched. Now that seems pleasant. It got dark. Yeah. Yeah, I chose not to read that on purpose. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> so guys, oh, this oh. week I am in um, Red Bank, New Jersey. On Wednesday, I am in Wilmington, Delaware on Thursday. That's the 11th, 12th, 13th. I'm in Newark, New Jersey. 14th, I'm in Easton, Pennsylvania. Um, in the following week, I'm in Nohegan Sun, 19th to 21st. The week after that, Jacob and I are in Houston, 26th, 27th, 28th. And the week after that, I am in Seattle, Washington, one night only New Year's Eve. H-Town, my first time back since I almost died. That is correct. Guys, for all of the tour dates, comedianjoshwolf.com, Australia and New Zealand dates are up. What do you want to say, dude? Yo. Yeah, you know the deal. You guys know the vibes. Uh, always thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, none of this is possible without any of you. Um, you know, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Um, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. And I forgot to say last episode, but as always, do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. I'll talk to you later. All right, everybody. Love you. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.